Good evening, dear friends. So, today we will learn what really causes scoliosis to develop. If you're interested in scoliosis, you know that most cases are scoliosis with a curve whose apex points to the right. Now, if we look at this person from the back, here he is facing away from us and turning his head to look at us. We call out to him, hey, he turns his head. So this is a view from the back. This is the right side. This is the left side. Here is the angle like this, meaning the apex of the arc is pointing this way. Now I'll show it like this as well. Look, so this kind of scoliosis, like this, like this, like this, it's the most common one. Why is it the most common? What is it related to? This is because mainly our right hand is more obedient than the left. We can't control the left hand as well. <laughs> it can do different things regardless of our wishes. The right hand obeys. Sometimes we even have to restrain the left one. And what unites most people in this regard is there a connection? We use our right hand more and scoliosis curves to the right. Is there a connection or not? All the scientists around the world are still debating this, conducting research. And finally, the mystery has been solved what this phenomenon is connected to. Here is the answer. It's right here. Here it is. You see this one. I'll mark it in red. This is so you don't get confused. This is the muscle, the quadratus lumbarum muscle. It's located in the lower back, going from the 12th rib down here to the iliac bone and to these transverse processes. It has three directions of fibers, like this, like this at an angle and like this, so it can participate in different movements. And there are two muscles. They are supposed to maintain a certain balance on the right and left sides. That's what was believed before, and some people still think so. And if, for example, this muscle uh, shortens and here it relaxes, then there will, uh, it will be a tilt in this direction. This can lead to scoliosis. But what's the flaw in this theory? It doesn't take into account that we move, that we actually make some movements in life. And what happens? What causes this angle to develop? So we're interested specifically in this part right here, this part. Where did this angle come from? Where did it come from? What what happened that made it appear? Why is it right here? Everyone has it. Even those who don't have scoliosis or posture problems, everyone still bends out here. Why? The quadratus lumbarum muscle affects this. This angle right here, that's how it appeared here. That's what it affects. But how exactly? Look, here it became shortened. It pulled here. But even if it becomes short, it won't make the angle appear like this just because it became short. For example, I make a movement. I need to turn this way or reach somewhere with my hand. I make some kind of turn. Even when I'm walking, there's this turn happening. So this movement happens while walking. The shoulder always turns. When I'm standing on one leg, doing a step, there's a moment when I'm standing on one leg. If you have this turn, then you can stand steadily on one leg. If not, you immediately lean to the side. You lose your balance. And if I have a short square lumbar muscle, then when I make this turn, when I turn this way, it sees evil. This part won't move. And right here, about at the level of which rib? Well, somewhere around the middle of the thoracic spine. There is excessive mobility right here, right here. 
and these lower ribs start to move worse right here where the peak of this angle is well maybe one vertebra higher or lower it depends the peak of this angle excessive movement occurs and in order to somehow that is the range of motion from here from here from here shifts to here and this area starts to move more and in order to make movement there because the range of motion is smaller only this part of the thoracic spine moves not the whole spine but right here where it is there's excessive mobility right here this is where this kind of tilt happens we lean over here so at the moment when i move my arm here i'm moving my arm e both of my shoulders are kind of in the same position that is both shoulders are roughly at the same height if the quadratus lumborum muscle is shortened then when i move my arm one shoulder rises and this one starts to drop down so if everything is normal they're at the same level if things aren't great then first you get this kind of tilt during this tilt the distance here between the ribs increases so that this joint uh, can then make a greater range of motion because it has to move for all the others and this movement happens often if your right hand is dominant you pick something up you put it down so all the main movements you do your dominant hand does more and at the same time there's this constant excessive tilt and that's why if we just take and use some methods like corsets to restrict the mobility of this part of the thoracic spine then it starts to participate more in breathing this half of the rib cage becomes more mobile during breathing right here this part because with every movement the ribs here get closer together it becomes harder to breathe on this side of the rib cage there will also be excessive mobility here during breathing that's why for instance scoliosis can be treated with corsets they restrict the mobility of this rib cage section trying to forcibly straighten it so it grows straight from then on but to improve the mobility of the rib cage on this side you need to eliminate the shortening of all these intercostal muscles because first the quadratus lumborum muscle shortens and then here on the left side the latissimus dorsi intercostal muscles and serratus anterior muscle become shortened that's why right-sided scoliosis is more common than left-sided so what should we do about it which exercises are best to restore the quadratus lumborum muscle we'll find out in the next episode see you next time dear friends